Welcome back to the Atari ST Nostalgia Gave a Basic Tour. And during the second series of videos, we actually made quite a lot of nice fancy uh, stuff. We programmed some, some animations and graphics and, and that kind of stuff. And in other videos, we learned some basic stuff on how to actually improve the performance and quality of our code. Um, but what if I want to share what I've created with another person and that person doesn't have the GFA Basic interpreter or, or he doesn't know how to use the interpreter? Um, in this video, I want to show the easy way of compiling our GFA Basic code uh, using the compiler. And so we can run it directly from, from GEM, from TOS. And at the same time, uh, have it running faster uh, because it's compiled to machine code. Uh, as you can see, I have my desktop open already, and uh, yeah, this is the uh, the contents of the GFA Basic compiler, which consists of many programs. And lucky for us, they created a nice menu. And um, yeah, the program itself, I, I don't know actually all the options. There's actually quite an extensive manual uh, with this, and as you can see, I'm using the compiler for GFA Basic 3.5, which is also the interpreter I, I'm using. So if you're want to, if you want to compile something, use the compiler of the same version of the of, of the code uh, of the interpreter. And yeah, there's lots of options here I can do. I, I never really do. Um, a lot with this there's lots of stuff about it in the manual and i think just reading it in the manual will actually um, make you understand it better than uh, when i do it the important one here is actually the sets that you can do because by default if i compile a program uh, it will make an object file called uh, test.o and the program will be called test.prg um, and you can sort of hear um, yeah, you can you can uh, uh, use these options to give it like uh, your program a specific name to be able to give it a name. And the easiest way that most people use is just using this option, PRG equals GFA, which basically means the program it will create, the PRG file, is actually the same, will be the same name as the GFA basic project uh, that you gave the GFA file. So I'm going to do that first. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, that's that is selected. And what I do is I can select using the select option, uh, select my GFA file, and I'm going to convert um, four programs. So I did the add ink.gfa from the, um, the mathematical operations video, the performance test to see what difference it actually makes if you use that code uh, after a compiler. Uh, the line bounce routine, some moving routine, and I'm going to also do the spiral uh, performance, measuring the rosettas to see uh, what difference it makes. I'm going to compile all four of them first and then uh, we will see what the effect is. So I will start with this add ink and as you can see it has uh, uh, now done it and you can see it's using the standard uh, GFA library. The object file will still be called test.o so uh, in this sets here I can actually choose to make it another name and as you can see the PRG it's going to put it in the same folder and it's going to be called add ink.prg. So that's that's basically the, the, the default option that most people use. So to compile it, I can select the compiler and it will compile it. And as you can see, it took only 0.3 seconds because yeah, this is a very small um, program, but I still don't have my PRG file. For that, I also have to run the linker. Uh, so if I do that, it has made now the uh, add ink.prg uh, that's in the folder. Um, you can also sort of open the code in the interpreter and you can actually test or execute your program from here. And I'm not going to do that because I just want to uh, compile the program. So I'm going to select the next one, which is uh, lines.gfa, and then run the compiler, run the linker. And as you can see this, yeah, because the programs are quite small, um, it's actually quite easy. So uh, compiler, and then run the linker again. And I'm going to select the fourth one, uh, which is the spiral performance and then do the compiler and do the link. I mean, this program is not very difficult to use. Uh, there's some options you can set that have some different effects. And the manual actually also gives you some quite extensive information about the different kinds of, uh, the different kinds of optimization the compiler actually does and how you can optimize your code to make sure the performance is the highest after running the compiler. And for some reason, yeah, this is a bit weird. Uh, I have that sometimes. After running the compiler, my, my gem desktop doesn't seem to uh, respond that well. Uh, but now it does. So as you can see, it created these four uh, PRG files that weren't there in the beginning. Um, I'm first going to do this uh, spir perf because this was the, the first one where we actually measured our uh, code. And I'm just doing the spider graph. Uh, so basically the rosettes with really bad code, but that has now been uh, run through the compiler. And, and I want to see uh, the difference in performance it actually uh, gives uh, compiling this code. 
and yeah the interesting thing is here you can see in when we ran this from the interpreter it was more than 17 seconds now it does it in 13.6 30.68 so this is about like 25 27 percent faster just by compiling the code and actually the code itself was quite quite rubbish um, so that that's interesting uh, of course it still takes quite long because even in machine code it still has to, the, the cpu still has to use do the the sin and cos uh, uh, sine and cosine calculations uh, of course with a bit of performance um, yeah you can see that actually the difference in in the compiler between this one and the previous one isn't isn't as big as it felt when we ran it from the interpreter i mean it's still it's still faster because i think after the first optimization in the interpreter this one was like 14 point something and now it's 12 but actually the performance difference just from the compiler for this code is only like 20 percent instead of 25 so that that's quite interesting and we will get back on why that is in, in when we look at the next program. Um, and of course, the one on steroids, this is the most interesting. So the code was already better. And as you can see, uh, after compiling it, I got another increase of performance by a factor of two. So this one is even, this one is twice as fast as the one on steroids running from the interpreter. So you can see that actually the, the fully optimized code also has the most performance benefits after compiling. So it really, really is interesting to, to optimize your code. Um, especially if you want to have some performance in your programs because it makes, uh, it makes a big difference and of course yeah instead of exiting to the interpreter this just exits to, to the gem desktop so I did the same for this add ink and it's going to measure the, the MT4 next loop first and I actually altered the code because the optimization the performance optimization for these simple commands uh, when you compile them is so big that I instead of now doing 10,000 loops I'm actually doing 100,000 loops and as you can see, 100,000 MT4 next loops was uh, 0.77 of a second, where in the interpreter, uh, only 10,000 of them was like points, yeah, like a quarter of a second. So there's a huge, huge performance benefit. But the interesting result is actually comparing this x equals x plus one, uh, which when I do it 100,000 times, is only 0.3 of a second. So that, that is like, I don't know how, but it, it's a lot faster than, because the, in the interpreter, it was like point. This was like more than, I don't know, I think there's like, like one and a half, 1.7 seconds or something. So there's a huge, I mean, this is like uh, 40 times as fast just by compiling it. So that, that's interesting. And I'm wondering if the ink command that I'm going to use in the next loop, what will the net time of that one be when I do 100,000 times ink? Because we saw that from the interpreter, that was, they actually made a difference also with a factor of seven. So I'm measuring the ink command and actually the net time is about the same. So that's quite interesting, and that's because the compiler um, actually does some code performance enhancing of itself. So if it if you're just using whole numbers like I did with the x equals x plus one, and I'm not using float variables, even using this x plus one command instead of the ink, when you compile it, it will actually be just as fast. So that's quite interesting, uh, and I was actually quite surprised when I was testing this. I did not know that when I was making the video about these commands. So um, that's good that that actually the compiler makes some optimizations. Um, of course, yeah, the same is with x plus 5. If I do the formula or the add command, um, yeah, they're both basically 0.3 of a second in, in net time. Uh, so that, that's, yeah, compiling helps also in some performance increasement. It, it really looks at what you want to do and tries to optimize it much to, to use single instructions for the CPU whenever it can. Um, of course, when I multiply, now I multiply by 1.01. .01 which makes the calculation a lot more complex and this also means that the compiler in this case because i'm not using whole numbers um, it cannot do the optimizations that it was doing for the previous command and you, you can actually see this measurement um, it took 13 seconds to multi do this multiplication so that took a long time and if i'm using the null command as you can see still the net time is only 0.41 and it's exactly the same multiplication just a 100 times doing uh, multiplying x by 1.01 .01. but in this case because i'm using the null command uh, and and the factor that i'm multiplying by is not a whole number you can see that actually then using the mathematical operators makes a huge difference when compiling so i would still say uh, use the the, oper the operators built in instead of the uh, x equals x times something because you can see that the difference is actually quite big uh, and the same goes for division. Uh, if I divide by a whole number, actually, this is almost as fast as, as the, um, the div command. In this case, it took 3.7 seconds. And when using the div command, it's 0 0.9. So even the difference between the two commands, 
uh, but multiplying and dividing is also bigger than when you are running it from the interpreter. Instead of a factor of two, it's like a factor of three or, or even more. Um, so that's, that's interesting to know. And of course, I did some other uh, ones like the, the line bounds routine. Uh, and actually this one, I don't see a lot of performance difference in this one. And that's mainly because um, this piece of code doesn't have lots of in, uh, difficult calculations. It's just, just putting data in memory, putting it in an array, uh, drawing a line. And yeah, all of those commands, um, because I'm still using the default GFR basic commands, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I mean, I could do sort of a performance measurement or try to do, but it, it will not be very objective because the bounds routine uh, sort of has some random factors in it. But as you can see, this is actually more or less the same as it was before. Uh, so that the compiler is not going to make your program run twice as fast uh, every time. Uh, and of course, the last one I want to show is the move.prg. Uh, um, yeah, which, which also actually basically is the same. And of course, that is because I'm using this put command to put this text on screen. And after every put command, I'm actually waiting for a vertical blank. And whether I'm using uh, the interpreter or I'm, I'm compiling it and then running it directly from Jam, it doesn't change the refresh rate of the screen, which still means every wait for a vertical blank means that that part takes 1 71th of a second. Or, or in my case in the emulator, maybe even a bit more because I have to optimize my uh, frequencies and stuff. But you can see that, yeah, the, the, the speed of this one is actually exactly the same as running from the interpreter. And it can do, probably do the commands a little bit faster, but not much. And I've actually tested by, by trying to do both the putting of the logo and the putting of the text within the time of one vertical blank, and it still wasn't fast enough. Uh, but probably if I make the object smaller, uh, I can make it faster because you can do multiple puts within one vertical blank probably. Um, so that's a matter of testing. Compiling is not going to help you there a lot. Um, which I found, uh, yeah, is, I found it interesting. Um, I think I, ah, I even put the line bounds in. Yeah, this is basically also the same. You can see I'm doing the line draw command and then uh, uh, waiting for a vertical blank and then putting off the text and waiting for a vertical blank. And in this case also, um, yeah, every change of the screen then takes the time it takes to do two vertical blanks, which is blanks, which is basically one thirtieth of a second ish. So uh, compiling is not going to make that faster. That's something to keep in mind. Um, but I found it quite interesting to see that yes, using the right kind of code actually makes your programs run faster uh, in and benefit more from compiling um, but also you can see that yeah there's some stuff that actually in your interpreter gets really slow but the compiler in certain situations can actually optimize them enough to still make them run like hella fast uh, like super fast uh, that you maybe didn't expect so i found that uh, quite an interesting to wait uh, thing to find out um, yeah apart from that there's yeah there's probably lots more to tell that we can about the compiler but to be fair um, it's better to, to, to read the manual. I mean, the manual uh, uh, gives you lots of stuff where uh, what code will uh, benefit more from compiling than the other one. Uh, one of them is actually uh, if you use loops in your program, um, it's, it's preferably uh, use a for next or a repeat until because they will actually run faster after being compiled than uh, the standard do loop command, um, which in the interpreter doesn't make a lot of difference. But after compiling, I think do loop is like like 30% slower or something that they say. Um, so that that's something to keep in mind. And there's lots of optimization tips in there. So if you are planning to write something that you want to compile into a PAG file, um, make sure you read the manual as well, because there's lots of good tips in there. And yeah, the sad news is with this look at the compiler, we actually have come at the end of what will be uh, the last video in series two. Uh, so this series is coming to an end and I must say I enjoyed making these videos a lot even if I, they don't have that many views but I enjoy this coding creating my own toys um, I re recollected a lot of stuff I had forgotten over the years and I hope I could help you as a viewer understand this this great basic uh, dialect better and motivate others to actually start coding in GFR or or even start coding in a different language um, I mean, knowing myself, I will probably also do a series three sometime. Uh, I just don't know yet uh, when exactly that will happen. Uh, but for now, yeah, I know, you, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this mixture of basic theory, fancy coding and pure messing around just as much I, as I did recording it. And with that, went, I will try, if I want to end this video and I will end this series. And I really hope to see you sometime in the future uh, when we pick up uh, where we left off. I want to thank you for watching.